I'll tell you what, you start talking about Adobe in a negative light, not even really a negative light, just even a slightly unfavorable light. Anytime you say anything even slightly off color about Adobe, somebody's bound to jump on. As I was on this journey to discover more about Affinity Programs, designer, photo, and publisher, trying to figure out if it is truly a viable option over, you know, the other guys, I must have crossed over some sort of troll bridge because all the Adobe bros came running out of there to say, ah, you can't defeat Adobe. Anyway, so what I'm gonna talk about today is I've had a few people ask me what the different capabilities are or what programs would be best for certain circumstances. What I thought I'd do today is I would talk about the different types of things that might get created by creative people and then figure out which affinity program is best for you. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California and I'm here to talk to you about Affinity. Yay! People have been asking, when are you gonna do more Affinity stuff? Well, here we go. Let's get to it. Not before I say, hey guys, uh, listen, I've been talking a lot about one other program that I've been using and that's Procreate on my iPad. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not doing Procreate videos yet because Ooh, I'm just not there yet. Probably Procreate videos in the future, but if you want to see some of the work that I have been doing on Procreate, then maybe what you want to do is go check me out on my Twitch channel. I'm doing live Procreate stuff Mondays and Fridays between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. every single week. You can watch me live. Go check it out. I will put a link in the description. That's French. Anyway, let's talk about Affinity. Okay, let's talk about the three different programs just to give you a primer. There's Affinity Designer, which is equivalent to Adobe Illustrator. There's Affinity Photo, which is obviously equivalent to Photoshop. And then there's Affinity Publisher, which is equivalent to Adobe InDesign. And of course, the Adobe products are incredibly robust. And I will concede that they have a lot more functionality than the Affinity programs. But I think at this time, Adobe is focused their energy strictly towards large groups, large teams, bigger companies. That's why they've added all these additional programs that go along with the Creative Suite so that the teams within these companies can access all these other different functionality, which is cool if you are a large conglomerate or if you are a big studio or whatever. Most of us, we don't need all that glut. Maybe some of the things that we've missed from Photoshop or Illustrator might go missing. I would really, really, really love it if Affinity would design something within Designer equivalent to Adobe's Live Trace. That would be huge. Affinity Photo doesn't have all of the functionality from like filters and whatnot for, that Photoshop does. And InDesign has an incredible amount of like teamwork oriented stuff that you just don't get on Publisher. You might not have used any Adobe at all, if not just a little, and you may not understand which program is the right one for you. It's not a terrible question because there's this interesting thing about the programs where they all kind of like come together. They all have a little bit of functionality of the other thing. Affinity Designer is mostly vector based, but you can still do pixel oriented art within there too. Affinity Photo is pixel based, raster based, mostly for photo retouching and photo editing and things like that, but you can still do some of the vector stuff you know, over there too. And then Affinity Publisher is super crazy because while you're in the middle of working on a multi-page layout, you wanna go and edit a photo, there's actually a photo-based persona within Affinity Publisher so that you can go edit that photo in the raster program. And you can also edit vector-based stuff in Designer. It's kind of nuts. You, It's almost as if you could say, I just want to use Publisher, but then I'm not sure if all the functionality is there in those other personas. So there's this crazy crossover between all three programs, which was by design. Affinity wanted to make sure that people could do as much within a particular program, but then they carried over super easy into the other one. So they act like a suite, which is appropriate but they act as if they can be combined. Like the power of three is greater than each individual by themselves. But again, do you need them all? And if not, which one is going to be correct for you and your work? I'm gonna break down an entire list of all kinds of different things that you might experience as a designer, illustrator, photographer, artist, whatever, all these different things that you might experience and tell you which program I believe is best for you. This is by no means a comprehensive list. There's probably things that I'm gonna forget, but maybe some of the things that I am gonna mention will coincide with those things that I might have skipped over. If I miss something, just ask me in the comments below and I will answer. Okay, let's start with the basics. Let's talk digital art. The super most easiest basic one is photos. Photo editing is best in Affinity Photo. 
You can do some in Publisher and you can do some in Affinity Designer, but it's best in photo. Digital illustration, hmm, tricky. Depending on your style, it could be Affinity Designer. If you like more clean lines, maybe a little bit of edginess. If you like a little bit more natural aspect to it, a little bit more grunge, then you wanna do Affinity Photo. Can you do layered illustration in Affinity Publisher? Yeah, you could do that. I could do collage layouts in Affinity Publisher if I wanted to, but it's probably better in photo. Pixel art, Affinity Photo. I'm sure you could probably break down pixels in Designer, but probably still photo. Cartoon line art, Designer. Manga style, anime style, maybe photo. Painterly type work like abstracts and whatnot, probably photo, could be designer, could be both. Again, all of these depend on your style. Punk rock zine covers, photo. Album cover design, probably photo, maybe designer. If you're doing an entire album with liner notes and all that, then that's published. But probably using the other two coordinated together. So in short, anything that has to do any kind of digital art, it is really gonna depend on your style. If you like really strong, clean lines, and you're probably gonna wanna use designer if you are more into a little bit more edginess, a little bit more softness, a little bit more painterly than photo. Before I got Procreate, I was doing a lot of my digital painting in photo. All right, let's talk business. The granddaddy of all marketing, the logo. Where should your logo be designed? Stylistically, Probably designer. The reason you probably want it to be done in designer is because you want it to be scalable. You want it to be able to grow and shrink because vectors grow and shrink well. But if you want something a little bit edgier, a little bit more grit, a little bit more grunge, a little bit something that looks like more en naturel, if a logo can be that, then you're gonna want Affinity Photo. Business cards, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher. The thing about Affinity Designer is it doesn't do multi-page layouts. You can't connect different pages together and string text along, but you can output different pages individually. So something as simple as like a postcard, a business card, a single page flyer can all be created in Designer. The other thing that Designer would be really good at is rendering type. It's not as easy to use type in Designer as it is in Publisher. So if you have a whole bunch of type, probably publisher, but if you just have a little bit of type, you can work in designer and it's gonna render out better. Small type is not gonna render in Affinity Photo. It'll render, it just won't render well. Announcement cards, thank you cards, greeting cards, cards of all types and sizes. Anything that probably folds, Affinity Designer or more likely publisher. If you were to output an Affinity Designer PDF and send it to your printer and told them where to cut, where to make the fold line, then they're probably gonna be able to figure it out and they're probably gonna be able to make something no problem. But if you really want something that's more exact and you can output as one single document as opposed to two separate PDFs, then publisher. Flyers and brochures, publisher first, designer second. That includes door hangers, table tents, sell sheets, trading cards, menus, hang tags, uh, blister pack backing boards, the Hot Wheels things that you see at the supermarket where it's like the cardboard thing and then the plastic thing on top of that. The cardboard part is what I'm talking about here. All of those things, publisher first, designer second. Posters, this is another tricky one, can be done in all three. Cobbs right down to style. If you're gonna be a poster designer, you can work in photo, you can work in designer. Back in the day, I knew plenty of people who were doing poster design, but they would do it in Illustrator. So you definitely, absolutely, positively could do it in designer. I know plenty of people who could also do it in Photoshop, present company included. You could do all of that. Now again, if you're trying to render really small type on a big old poster, eh, type's gonna get a little funky, but it can be done. Can you also do it in Publisher? Yes, you absolutely can. But the artwork is probably more likely gonna be rendered in one of those other two programs. Catalogs, calendars, booklets, magazines, zines, the full, anything that has a multi-page layout, anything that requires more than four pages. Publisher, if you are trying to build anything bigger than this in Designer, you're doing way, way, way more extra work. Spend the extra money to get Publisher. It's like 50 bucks. Spend it, save all that time. We'll definitely make up that $50 just in time alone. How about swag? T-shirts, mugs, pillows, all that different stuff? Probably designer. Let's say for instance, you get a particular design and you want it to work on all of those places. You want to work on a button and a sticker and a mug and a shirt and a pillow and all these other things. Let's just say for all intents and purposes that that's what you want, designer, all day long all day long. Branding and visual identity. Let's say you wanna design an entire brand, your entire brand, start to finish all the way across. That means your logo, your business cards, any kind of marketing materials you have, your website, your social media presence, all of that stuff. What's gonna be best for that? Designer. 
What about lettering or typeface? Let's say I want to make a font, Dave. Designer. I'm not a type designer, but you may not be able to generate something directly out of designer that creates a typeface. There's obvious, there's something in the middle there between designer and the typeface that I don't know about. And that thing is, that's important. But if you are working to make a design in any program, designer. Oh, I know. Social media banners. You need banners for all your different social media outlets or little icons or whatever. Uh, photo. Because here's the thing, all of those things need to be rendered as like a JPEG or a PNG file. And that means they are a lossy format, which means they are going to lose resolution as they go up and down size. So you might as well just use photo because you might need to use some sort of photorealistic thing. You might have a photorealistic background. You might have some photorealistic elements in there. So you might as well just use photo for those. Just make sure you get your sizes correct. I also recommend that if you're gonna do that, make sure you build them maybe twice the size and that way you can maybe use them for something else down the road and then size them down to fit whatever element that you need them to fit. What about clip art and stock imagery? Depends. Depends. If it's photo, it's obviously photo. If it's more illustrative in nature, then designer. If you are trying to use something that somebody's gonna wanna use professionally, designer. You're gonna want to render that stuff in vector so that they have the capability of resizing. Especially if you happen to be selling that downloadable to somebody who is a little less savvy than you and me. Because I'm sure you've seen it. If you're a graphic designer of any kind of ilk, you've probably seen it. You hand somebody a file and then they go and turn that thing around and they stretch it and they pull it and they resize it and it just looks like crap and you're pulling your hair out. So you're definitely gonna wanna do that in a vector-based program and tell these people that they wanna render it in a vector-based program so that it definitely, absolutely, positively comes out the way you both want it. That's pretty much all I can think of. If you can think of more, make sure you put a comment below and tell me which ones I missed and I will go ahead and answer those later. Let's just recap a little bit. Anything that relates to digital illustration, designer first, probably photo next. Anything that's a single page, whether it's two-sided or one, probably publisher first, then designer, and maybe photo, depending on your particular style. Anything multi-page, just get publisher it'll save you it'll do you'll you'll love me for it later so so much precious time please the magazine designer in me is just asking you to buck up for the 50 extra dollars for publisher i promise you you will you will thank me later maybe it's a little bit of a learning curve but i think you figure it out now here's a tough question I get this all the time. I get it all the time. Dave, if I had to pick only one program to use from the Affinity Stable, what would it be? This is such a hard question to answer. It comes down to style. It comes down to what kind of products you're working on. But if you're gonna force my hand that you only pick one, then it's definitely gonna be designer. It's just got the most versatility of all the different programs. From a functionality standpoint, it has the most versatility. It was the first program that Affinity created and it will probably always be their flagship program. But truly, spend $150, get the power of all three. Because like I said before, all three combined, way more powerful than each one on its own. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Save your pennies, spend the 150 bucks, you won't regret it. That's it, that's all I got. And again, if I missed anything that you think I should have covered, make sure you go down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer, whether it's in the comments or in another video. Could happen. I'm gonna get out, but not before I say, hey guys, thanks very much. I really appreciate you. If you enjoyed this, while you're headed down there to make that comment, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so yet and make sure you hit that bell so you never miss a thing. And if you enjoyed this really, really much, Go share it with your homies. Thanks very much, guys. Remember, I will be on Twitch Monday and Friday doing live art for you. Be good today. Be better tomorrow. See you.